Jonathan Family Services is a haven for troubled children and their families. Many of our children live here on our grounds where they can heal, learn, and grow. With our dynamic programs, we serve as a bridge from the past to the future, from fear to courage, from failure to success. I am uh, Charles Lockwood, and I'm the Executive Director here at Lutheran Youth and Family Services. Well, the mission of the organization goes all the way back to William Passivan, who was a Lutheran pastor back in 1854. And our mission has remained fairly consistent, and that is really to, uh, to bring healing into the lives of kids. Uh, many of the kids who come to us come from troubled homes and backgrounds, and we try our best to work with the families and with the children to try to bring about healing in those situations. We serve over 300 children a year here across a continuum of services from a very structured to an unstructured. We have an educational program in our school. We also have a very structured residential treatment facility program here on our main grounds. We have independent living, foster care, we have a shelter program. We serve these kids in a whole variety of different settings, including wraparound back in their communities. We serve children anywhere from six years old all the way to 18 years old with a whole variety of different kinds of needs. Our ultimate goal is to send them back to their homes to live in their families, in their communities, in as normal a setting as possible so that they can go on and continue their lives and be successful. Well, my name is Julie Wallenmeyer and I work here at Lutheran Youth and Family Services in the stables and with the small animals. Um, my, I guess my official title is barn manager and what I do is take care of the horses and help the kids learn how to take care of the horses. I like riding and I like the way like whenever they move, the horses move. I like just like the breeze and it's so relaxing. The therapeutic value is probably if right up there being able to talk to the horses by giving the animal their own feelings they're able to kind of work through them themselves. The best thing about them is you could talk to them and they don't tell nobody. The animals are sort of like a confession. Like you could tell them anything. They'll just like look at you. You could like look into their eyes and it's just so sweet. I could tell them a lot, like about my family issues and about my past. The single most beneficial thing that the kids gain from the program yeah. would probably have to be um, their confidence level. You know, when they come in and they've never worked with horses before, they're a little, little bit shy, a little bit timid. And then once they've worked with them, they really gain a lot of confidence because they're able to, you know, determine which way the horse is going to go and how to make it stop. And then when other kids come into the program who haven't worked with horses before, they're able to um, teach them. Well, I act calm and cool whenever I get my toe stepped on. The only reason I can't go into crisis about it is because I know I can either put myself in danger or the horses in danger. The Director of Religious Services, and that carries a number of hats. That means that sometimes I'm an administrator. Most of the time it's uh, characterized as being um, what the kids call me as Pastor Kyle. So I'm pastor on campus. Now I think last the last two Sundays we've had more than 50% of our kids in worships on Sunday mornings. It's a non-denominational service, though. It isn't uh, strictly Lutheran, and uh, it's, uh, it's open to all. Also wear the hat of a therapist, both individual and family therapist. It, it can mean a, a number of different kinds of things. Uh, just saying, someone saying, I want to talk, can we go for a walk? The children and youth who come to LYFS usually come from uh, families in crises of one kind or another. I've been here five months already, and for five months I really haven't been out in society because of my physical aggression. The parent, the mother or the father or both, may have um, an alcohol or drug dependency difficulty. And as a result of that and growing out of it, they may be abusive. So that's one characteristic. That's not characteristic of all of ours, though. They may, come out of a, they may come out of a home with very supportive parents, but have a, a mental health problem that they're dealing with, and this structure allows for uh, a change. It, it allows for uh, psychiatric help. It allows for a, a little bit of, of education, a different ways of living. 
so to cope with the problems. And so the time for the, the family and the child to make some changes and then choices. And then hopefully getting, the, the ultimate goal is to get that family back together. I'm working on my family issues. One of my goals are to go back with my father. It's working out okay. I haven't heard from him in a while though. To reunite the uh, child into the into the biological family, and so it's a it's it's a bridge from this kind of experience and back into the home. But but surrounding that child with services during the interim. I'm Jamie Glover. I've been here eight and a half years, and I'm deputy director of programs. Um, my job here is to supervise and hire all the mental health professionals that work with the children providing individual family and group therapy. Uh, we try to make sure that in the units the staff are, are working with them in a way that's, that's going to benefit them, that they're going to feel nurtured, that they're going to feel protected. I feel, I feel happy and I feel proud of myself because even my staff can trust me. I share my secrets with any staff. I think we also have a good reputation in the community and in uh, actually the whole state of Pennsylvania at this point because we get referrals from all the counties, it seems, at this point in the state. And I think we have a reputation for quality treatment. Um, people come and they look at our campus and they see our horses and they see the trees and everything and they think it's a nice place for a child who has to be in placement to live. You know, it's the community <clears throat> interacts with the kids from Lutherans. I think it's it's important that they accept them. And, and, and the kids are they're just kids, you know, and they they need to be in the community, they need to have fun, they need to do kid things. We go skating to the movies to the mall. Uh, out for ice cream. Just the other day, Sunday, I had walked a six mile walk to raise money for the hungry people around the world. I am Dr. Victor Adebenpe. I am the medical director of Lutheran Youth and Family Services. I think it's a fantastic place. I love it here. I've seen a lot of children here who obviously have needed something like this for a long time in their lives. The children are being transferred here because they need more attention. They need more one-to-one -one individualized attention of the kind that we give here. Typically, I would interact with children in the school. I will then meet with uh, teachers and sometimes with clinicians uh, to review with them the progress on those children and to see that we're doing the right thing medically, uh, emotionally, and spiritually. The spiritual part is a very important part of our uh, services here. As you may know, this is uh, a religiously based, church-based organization and we consider that one of the things that make us very different from other facilities that provide these kinds of services. But we do have a good history of uh, graduates who have been here, who have learned uh, what we have to teach and who have been prepared to readjust into the mainstream of adult life when they leave here. The newest addition to the LYFS campus is St. Stephen's Academy. Our modern school was erected in 1994 and educates kids ages 6 through 18. Our teachers help contribute to the therapeutic process while motivating our kids to be their very best. Well, I get A's and B's on some certain subjects and my day's not bad. I feel like, wow, you know. I'm so proud of myself. I made it honor roll. I like to do homework, which is reading and math, social studies. When I grow up, I want to be a daycare worker. I'm a go to, I like to go to college. Nuclear, nuclear engineering. If I had to boil all of this down to one word, I would say the one thing I'd want to give the kids is hope. And a lot of our kids don't come from a situation where they have had hope. And they don't have anywhere to go to. And I think one of the most discouraging things for them is now that we're going to put them back out in the community, well, what's ahead for me? And if we can give them some hope, and one way of doing that is to give them some tangible life skills, to give them 
uh, ability to go back and uh, work in the community, for example, give them some vocational opportunities. But what really touches me is the way that, that uh, for our youth, for our children, that hope stays alive. When you see that, that change, it always, it always you know, touches you. And it doesn't, come a, it doesn't come easy, as we all know. It means many times of trying and then falling back and then trying again. And it means a lot of staff around who consistently kind of are like shock absorbers. They take the worst hit that the kid out of anger or rage or fear or just being scared or uh, can give them and then come back and, and, and offer them support, care, and love. Uh, even the biggest organizations have uh, fundraising activities, and so do we. And uh, anybody who is uh, willing to participate in that will be contributing a great deal to the success and the welfare of what we do here. You too can help troubled children cross the bridge to a brighter future. By getting involved, you'll see how our dynamic programs help kids and their families every step of the way. I think I'm totally different from when I first came. The difference is I'm happier. I like it here at LYFS. It's really good. Because if kids give LYFS a chance, this place can really work.